Hey everyone, this is Gabby and Karim, and you're listening to the Making of an Incredible MD podcast by Halide to Health. Tune in each week to hear us talk about the journey of getting into med school. From GAMSAT to medical interviews, get the insider scoop from med students who have done it all before. So So stay stay tuned and and get ready ready to get get med ready. ready. (laughs) Hey everyone and welcome back to the podcast. Karim and I are here via Zoom today, unfortunately, but we're recording a podcast all about the acting station for medical interviews today. Before we jump in, I will just do an acknowledgement of country. So I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and rightful owners of the land in which we are both on today. I am on Yorta Yorta land and Karim is on Wurundjeri land. I'd like to pay my respect to the elders past, present and emerging, as well as any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander peoples who may be listening to the podcast today. So, hey, Krim, how are you going? Yeah, good. Uh, Not too excited about this most recent lockdown, but here we are. Yes, yes. Very disappointing that we're back in the same situation, but that's fine. We've got some podcasting to keep us entertained this weekend. So let's jump straight in. So, Karim, what do you think the point of acting stations is in medical interviews? Well, the whole point is really to see how you interact with different types of people um, and to see how you react when people are distressed or when they're upset. Um Obviously, these are pretty common scenarios in medicine in general. You're obviously dealing with a lot of people who are scared or upset. Um, So it's really important to be able to handle those tough situations. And that's something that they definitely look for in interviews. So acting stations are used pretty commonly. Um, Interestingly, I think everyone's sort of uh, pretty scared of them (laughs) like across the board. Uh, but there's no need to be supportive. Just try and stay as yourself and just try and be nice is probably the overall message that we're going to give. But yeah, that's sort of the point of the acting stations to figure out how you interact with people. Yeah, that's so true. Definitely going into medical interviews, it was the station that I dreaded the most, I think, because um, people, you know, said they're really hard actors, they're crying, they're upset, and you have to console them. And I thought that was just going to be really sort of intimidating um, and quite an artificial situation that might make me feel awkward. So I think that's what I was mostly scared about. Um, was that sort of what you were, you were feeling as well, Krum? Yeah, absolutely. And of course, I've never been in a situation where I had to console someone who is upset. Um, I mean not to the extent of like I just received a really really bad news just type of upset um so it wasn't something I'd like practiced often or not something I'd you know learned much about and you definitely get some more training on it in med school um and I do recommend just doing some reading on it before your MMI interviews because it is an important station and does come up every now and again so it's important to be able to handle delivering bad news as as it's as we call it Yeah, for sure. And there's definitely patients in the hospital that you will interact with that may be upset or frustrated or have could have just received bad news themselves. So it's an important skill to start learning. Um, And it is quite different, I would say, comforting someone who you know, maybe like a loved one, friend, family member, and then a complete stranger. It's very different. You don't know the whole story. You don't know their situation, um, sort of their priorities and beliefs. Um, so it, it's much harder, I think, um, especially when there's an examiner sitting in the room, you feel a bit awkward um, and it's, it's just that added pressure. So it's definitely something not to be scared about, but something to consider in your, in your practice because a lot of people don't practice it, I think. Yeah, it's also hard to know like what the right answer is because there isn't a right answer with acting stations. It's more just how you behave. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that flows really nicely into talking about the different ways in which these sort of stations can be presented. So we've spoken about when someone is upset um, and your role is to like comfort them or console them. Um, But another way you might get this uh, station presented to you is if someone asks you for medical advice, how do you react? And this is like in a non-medical setting. So I think the the station that everyone gets is like you're sitting on a train (laughs) or some form of public transport and someone asks you for medical advice because they know you're a medical student or they know you're a doctor 
how do you react? So that's definitely a common one. Another one is just asking for help. Maybe someone needs directions. Someone, you know, has some sort of family situation going on and they're asking you for help or they're asking you to help them make a decision as well. So these are probably the most common ones. Obviously, it's it's really varied and there's lots of different stations that you could get, lots of different scenarios. So be prepared for anything. But I think these are probably the most common ones. Would you agree, Krim? Yeah, I think so. Um, and with asking for help, sometimes they are like in a state of confusion. Maybe they have like dementia or something and, and, and then they're asking for help. Maybe they've gone lost somehow. Um, and so it's just being aware of those things. Um, but yeah, it, those are sort of the most common types. They're all pretty similar. They're all about consoling or like making someone feel better or just empathizing or providing some sort of relief um, to, to a person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what we might do now before talking to you about how you can approach these sort of stations and how you can sort of structure it, we might go straight to a scenario. We did semi-promise this last week um, and we don't like to back down from promises. So we'll give this a go, but um, a little bit of a disclaimer. Unfortunately, neither crew or I are professional actors. <laughs> Um, and just because we approach something a particular way doesn't mean you need to do the exact same thing as us. So we don't recommend, you know, copying what we say word for word. This is just going to be a really small, short snippet of um, an example. So it's definitely not getting the full picture, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what a good response looks like and what a not so good response looks like. <laughs> so Karim, did you want to start by being the actor for us? Yeah, so just as a background, so this is my, what you might see at the front of the door when you're about to walk into the interview room. So the scenario is that you're a medical student on a train with your textbooks open. The person sitting next to you notices your textbooks and asks for help as they've just received some bad news from their doctor. Okay, so I'm the actor. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, oh, you're a medical student. Yeah, I am. Second year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I just came from an appointment with my doctor and, and I, I got some really bad news. Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm just really shocked. Um, I wasn't expecting it at all. and I don't really know what to do. My doctor wants me to start chemo next week, but I'm really worried about the side effects, especially on my fertility. Do you know anything about this? Like, what, what do you think I should do? Mm, mm. I, I can imagine that must be a really hard decision. I'm sorry that you're going through this and have to make such a big decision. Have you discussed it with any of your loved ones? I think making decisions like this can be really tough alone. So maybe reaching out to your loved ones for support on the decision could help. Uh, I haven't thought about that yet. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. There's There's definitely a lot to think about at the moment. Maybe you can discuss your options a bit more with your with a doctor, a doctor you trust. Mm, yeah. And at this point, let's pretend the actor starts crying or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Give us a cry, Karim. <laughs> no, I definitely can't. Um, just pretend I'm very, very upset. And um, yeah, Gabby, what would you do if I started crying? <laughs> yeah. So I think pre-COVID times and COVID times are a little bit different. Pre-COVID times, I wouldn't hesitate to sort of reach out and, and hold a hand or touch a hand if I felt like that was appropriate and that the actor um, or the person that I was talking to was going to be receptive against that. And I feel like that's sort of a decision that you decide in the moment. Like you get an, you get an understanding whether that's appropriate or not. Um, but either way, COVID or non-COVID, I would definitely find a tissue and there's going to be a box of tissues in the room and I would offer it to the, um, to the person crying. Um, and I'd let them sort of just express their emotions a little bit, because if this is a real situation and they had just found out some bad news, there's probably a million thoughts going through their head and they need to sort of detangle those a little bit. So I'd just let them sort of talk and I'd just sit there actively listening and demonstrating to them that I care by letting them talk. Um, I wouldn't try to just shove in you know, I'm sorry every two seconds or some sort of comforting sentence every now and again, I would just let them talk and let them express their emotions and let them figure out how they're feeling, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that a moment of silence can be really powerful as well in these situations. Um, 
just letting the person grieve or whatever it might be is really, really uh, important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think sort of what we tried to demonstrate in that response in terms of structure um, is obviously it's dependent on the scenario, but it's it should be a normal conversation. So you should flow with the actor, let them sort of take the lead because they have a script and you don't. Um, but you know, as if it's a normal conversation, go with that flow. Remember to introduce yourself and remember their name. We didn't do names in this scenario, but that is important. Like, don't forget their name or call them something different. Um, and if the if it says on the wall like Miss Baker or Miss something, ask them, is that your preferred name or shall I call you something else as well? I think that's I think that demonstrates a further understanding of sort of etiquette um, and care. And then also like find out what's going on, let them talk, let them carry this conversation, then offer advice and maybe counter advice. So see how I offered the advice of talk to family members. And then the actor was like, yeah, I haven't really thought about it. So maybe they weren't really sort of receptive to that. So then I said, well, why don't you talk to a professional, someone that you trust? So you try something and they're probably going to be resistive or resistant to the first thing you offer. Um, so then try something else, have something else in your sort of um, toolbox that you could give. Um, but also really remember- common, um, yeah, to, for actors to sort of like resist the first thing that you um, suggest, they just like will say, oh, no, I haven't really thought about that. Or, I don't really want to do that. Mm. Um, so yeah have have a few options available for them to sort of discuss yeah um, and try not to fall back too many times on the same thing because it gets a bit repetitive yeah absolutely um that's yeah that's really important and I think it's also really important to remember your limitations so for example in this scenario the actor specifically asked me for what I thought about the chemo side effects and whether or not it's sort of worth it um and obviously I sort of dodged the question directly in the beginning because I wanted them to think about you know making that decision themselves with their loved ones and with medical professionals but I think if this was an actual scenario the actor would come back to that original question at some point and I would have to address it and how I would approach that is I would say um Actually, I'm just a medical student. I'm in my early stages of learning at the moment. Um, and I really don't have the expertise or knowledge to be able to provide you with more information on what decision to make. Um, but I definitely encourage that you have this conversation with a doctor because it is a really important one. And I totally understand um, this frustration and confusion that you're having because it's hard to know what the right decision is. So speak to loved ones that you trust speak to the professionals that you trust um, and hopefully you'll be able to be able to figure out some sort of solution something along the lines of that obviously that isn't perfect um, but I think you know first of all admitting your limitations and then providing another option is the best way to go what do you reckon Karim yeah absolutely and you can even mention things like oh, this is also not the best environment for me to be giving you information it's not very private there are other people around um, so I think it's best that you carry out this conversation with a medical professional you trust um, in a setting that's appropriate, I suppose. Yeah, like yeah. a private, safe environment. Exactly, yeah. An environment where they can like freely express themselves, have a good cry if they need to, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now should we do a not good response or I don't know how to frame it, like a not ideal response? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, I'll be the actress this time. So the same scenario, Karim is a medical student on the train with his textbooks open. The person sitting next to you, me, notices your textbooks and asks for help as they have just received bad news from their doctor. Okay. Oh, are you a medical student? Yeah, yeah, I'm a second year medical student. Oh, I just came from an appointment with my doctor and... um. I received some bad news. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. It, it, it was really shocking. I wasn't expecting it. I don't know what to do. The doctor wants me to start chemo next week, but I'm worried about the side effects, especially on my fertility. What do you think I should do? As a medical student, you should know. Oh, like, oh what kind of cancer do you have? Uh, breast cancer. Oh, Okay. Right, and they want you to do chemo. Well, we'll just do what the doctor says. But, but what about the side effects? Yeah, well, I think like the doctor would know more. So just make sure you listen to them. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Like, I think the chemo was probably a good idea, like, because breast cancer is like malignant, so you could die from it. Uh, do you think I'm going to die? Oh, like, I hope not, no, but... Okay. Like, it's pretty It's pretty bad, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But I think you should just listen to the doctor. Okay, thanks. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so that's a that's a cold-hearted just not a good person <laughs> yeah yeah that scenario yeah didn't apologize once um didn't acknowledge my feelings my I emotions. completely ignored their feelings um is probably more appropriate yeah. yeah so this is doing the exact opposite of everything that we said to do um giving them advice in an inappropriate setting, uh, asking personal information that they shouldn't have, um, saying things that might obviously really worry them that breast cancer could kill them, that sort of thing. Um, just not being empathetic at all. So that's all the bad things, all the things that you shouldn't do, crossing all the boundaries, being rude and dismissive as a person. Um, obviously, I hope that no one would ever do this. <laughs> but yeah, this is just the opposite of everything that we recommend that you do. Yeah, yeah. I think all of our listeners would ace this station, um, but it is good to just sort of run through that, just to reinforce the sort of do's and don'ts and see the differences. So let's summarise those do's and don'ts now. Um, so first of all, the do's, be nice, pretty simple one, pretty basic one. Um, but a very important one. Do also remember that you are playing a part in a story. So it may seem really artificial and sort of awkward because there's someone in the corner with a clipboard ticking and crossing things. Um, but that's sort of the point. So just try to immerse yourself in the scenario and think about if this was actually real life, how would I react? Um, and how would you want someone to react to your family member or your loved ones if they were reaching out to a stranger? That sort of thing. I think thinking about that can help. Um, and as we sort of emphasized before, embrace silence. So especially if your actor is upset, um, grab them a tissue um, and, and just let them express their emotions. You don't have to fill every second with words of comfort. You can just demonstrate active listening and care through that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so those are all the things that Gabby demonstrated. So just being really empathetic, uh, letting the actor or patient speak and having a turn and just talking and expressing their thoughts and just mostly doing the listening um, and then just immersing yourself in the situation essentially in terms of the don'ts the big don'ts are don't be scared um, obviously going into these acting stations can be really uh, terrifying <laughs> try not to be scared try to just embrace the situation just try to have fun with it um, it can actually be quite fun after the interviews. You feel like a big sense of relief and you realise it wasn't actually that bad. Uh, make sure not to cross any boundaries. So that was a really, that was something we tried to demonstrate with the bad acting, with the bad um, scenario uh, where I pretended I wasn't a medical student or I offered medical advice or I told them what to do and um, I really wasn't, considering who I was in the situation, which is really important. Um, so make sure not to cross any of those boundaries. And then finally, and probably most importantly, don't be rude or dismissive of the actor's feelings because that's really what they're looking for. And that's the whole point of these stations. So make sure that you're lovely to them, that you're empathetic, that you're nice. Um, and yeah, just don't, don't be rude or dismissive of how they feel. Yeah, exactly. Just, just be a human. Um, and comfort a fellow human. I think that's that's really important. That's They want to see how you react with people, how you interact with people, sorry, um, and how you react to people expressing emotions specifically, okay? Um, and I think that brings us to the end. So hopefully you all enjoyed our little acting stints um, and it was just a little snippet of what a station might be. Um, so it's definitely not the full story, but hopefully this gives you more of an advice, more of an idea of sort of, what's a strong response and what's a not so strong response. Um, but my final advice is just sort of be yourself um, and be a nice human, I think. Karim, what about you? Yeah, more, more or less just exactly the same. Just be yourself, be nice, 
Uh, remember who you are in the situation. Just don't be rude. <laughs> you can also get a pretty good mark on the station by not being rude. The bare minimum. The bare minimum. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you all for listening today. I hope you found this episode helpful. We'll have another episode out next week, exploring another type of station or question set you can get. Um, but also remember to look into our online MMIs. Um, we have mocks starting in a few weeks time. So keep an eye out on our website, Facebook and Instagram for more information about that. But thank you all for listening. Hope you enjoyed. Bye everyone. Thanks everyone. Thank you for listening to the Making of an Incredible MD podcast by Halide to Health. Please like, share and subscribe to help spread the word about our podcast. And we'd love to hear your feedback. So send us an email or message on Facebook. All of our links are in the show notes. Thanks. We'll see you next time.